My hair is uh, long and has some gold and brown, but mm-hmm. I look human, but a little different than human. Mm-hmm. Tell me about that. My eyes are different. They're um, the colored part of the eye is bigger and covers more of the eye than in humans. Mm-hmm. So look at the rest of your body. What does your body look like? It's luminous. It's luminous. Look at your skin. What color is your skin? It's like a peachy, pale, kind of peach colored light. Mm -hmm. Are you by yourself? I'm with Raphael. Mm -hmm. What does Raphael look like? Like the Lion Man. Like the Lion Man. Okay. Has he changed? Oh, I know him. Uh Uh-huh. So, why are you here today with Raphael? He's there so I feel safe because we've done this before in dreams, so he Mm -hmm. wants me to feel safe. Okay, good. Very good. So, I'd like for you to focus again on your body. Is there anything in particular that you need to know about this body? How you're dressed? I'm wearing this brown, rustic... Mm-hmm. Cloth like a tunic, almost like a rough, like a beggar, like a monk. Like mm-hmm. I don't have shoes, and it's to remember life where I wore that. All right. So I'm going to count from five to one, and we're going to go back to that lifetime to find out why it is that you need to remember this life. So I want you to go ahead and take a deep breath in. And five, begin to travel through time and space to find this lifetime. Four, drifting and floating. Three, allow the images now to begin to appear. Two, sense your surroundings. One, be there completely. Look around you. Tell me where you are. What do you see? It's desert. There's uh, caves. There's the caves are like brown, light brown. I live. I live in a cave. Are you male or female? I'm male. Mm-hmm. There are villages, but I choose to live alone. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you to take a look at your body. Look, starting with your feet. What do you see? I see old bare feet. Old bare feet. How old are you? 50s, 60s, late 50s. Yes. Take a look at your clothing. It's rustic and torn. Mm Mm-hmm. Look at your hands. What do your hands look like? Calloused. Uh Thin. What color is your skin? It's dark olive. Uh What do your face look like? What is that? Long gray hair. Uh Skinny, bony, and... an old man. Okay. So I'd like for you to just look around in your surroundings and describe to me where you are. I'm in this this cave, but it's near a forest. There's trees um, at the base. Mm -hmm. It's quiet. There's I'm at peace, there's nature, and Mm -hmm. I feel very much safe alone Mm -hmm. in this environment. What do you call yourself in this life? Maruk. Maruk. Maruk, have you always been in this cave? No. No, I used to live with people. All right, so let's find out what happened 
that led you into moving into this cave, I'd like for you to close this scene and we're going to go back in time to the cause of you separating yourself from all those people. Be there now. Tell me where you are. There's a lot of there's a lot of fighting, there's a lot of um a lot of yelling, there's war, there's hostilities, uh new people coming in to to the village mm -hmm. and there's there's fighting. How old are you there? A lot younger, 20s, 30s. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about yourself right now. What do you look like there? How are you dressed? Well, I'm not wealthy, but I'm not poor. Mm -hmm. I have more fine clothing. Mm -hmm. I have a belt. I'm more clean. I'm still alone. Mm -hmm. I don't feel... I don't feel like I'm part of this village, really. I'm mm -hmm. what do you like do? an outcast. What do you do when you're in this village? Do you have an occupation or something that you do in your in your time I fix things mm -hmm. I work with my hands I like a craftsman mm -hmm. like a builder craftsman um Let's people see. come to me to to make craft. things yes to fix things to make things good so I'd like for you now to go to the moment when you have created something with your hands that gives you much pleasure and joy. I made something for a little boy mm -hmm. and um, he's amazed and he's looking up at me so happy. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? It warms my heart. Mm -hmm. To be looked at in that way. Yes. Is that usually how they look at you in this village? No. No. Tell me about that. I haven't had a... I really haven't had a family. Mm -hmm. I grew up alone. Um... Extended family, uh, not a lot of care, not mm -hmm. a lot of support. What happened to your family, Maruk? He died when I was young. Mm -hmm. I was raised by relatives. They didn't really want me. Mm -hmm. So nature was my family. Mm -hmm. Very good. So now, Maruk, I'd like for you to close that scene, and we're going to go to the very important scene from that lifetime that impacted you. Be there now. Where are you? It's a tavern. It's a gathering place. They're arguing about the war. Mm-hmm. Everyone's deciding to fight, and I don't want to fight. How old are you? 27, 30. Mm-hmm. And there's two people there that I... that I know... I wouldn't call them friends, but they're close to me. And everyone uh, wants to fight, I don't want to fight, and... They make me feel like less of a man. Mm -hmm. 
and a coward and they're throwing things at me how does that affect you how do you feel Oh, it just reminds me of being shunned so long. Mm -hmm. They say you're not part of us. You don't belong here. So you've all you've been shunned by your family and shunned by your friends, and the village and the mm -hmm. village too. And the village. So what do you do next? What action do you take? Oh, I leave to the cave. I just I leave. I don't want to be. I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight, I don't want to, to kill, I don't want to be alone. All right, so let's move forward now. When you're in that cave, you're living there, and I'd like for you to just see a normal day. What is it that you do? How do you live? I find food. I'm good at finding food, fishing and berries. and planting food and it's probably why I'm so skinny and there's so much food <laughs> mm -hmm. there's a lot of quiet a lot of animals birds and it's like the trees and the rocks and plants and they're my family mm -hmm. closer to how do you feel about your life now? I'm at peace. I'm at peace. Very good. So I'd like for you to close this scene and let's move to the last day of your life in this lifetime that you're living now, that you're experiencing in that cave. And tell me what's happening. Where are you? The war got closer and closer, took over everything. There's fires and devastation and encroaching on my home. And as much as I didn't want to fight, that fight has come to me. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? I run out of the cave. I hear screaming. I, I see a child. I see a little boy. He's all alone, and I want to help. I want to run, and I want to save him. I want to help him. What happens next? I hold him in my arms, and the fire comes. And I'm blinded by the fire. I want you to feel this little boy in your arms. Do you know this boy in the lifetime of Alexandra? Feel his soul. Holding him feels like holding Jean. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of the little boy who looked up to me. Mm -hmm. It made me feel worthy. Very good. So I'd like for you to just take your last breath in that lifetime, disconnecting from that body, and allow your spirit to be free of that vehicle. And tell me what you see and experience from that point. Look all around you. In a garden. Mm -hmm. It's like a, like a healing garden, like a place you go to clear your wounds. Mm -hmm. Just heal. What kind of a body do you have there in this healing garden? It's just light. Mm -hmm. What color is this light body? There's different colors. There's uh, blue, uh, 
There's a lot of white. Mm -hmm. There's also some orange and uh, a little green. Is there anybody there with you in this garden? Or are you by yourself? I'm waiting for someone. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens. Who comes to join you there? It feels feminine, but it's genderless. Mm -hmm. It's a nurturing presence, very motherly mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes shows up as a beautiful Greek woman mm -hmm. in a white gown with the laurels in her hair mm -hmm. beautiful black hair so I remember her from a time we knew each other on earth mm -hmm. Does she say anything to you? It's more I feel like I'm engulfed in a spinning energy of love. Mm -hmm. What does that energy of love do for you? It's spinning around my, uh, my being and like rocking me like a baby, mm -hmm. soothing, happy. Wonderful. I feel dizzy, but it's good. Mm -hmm. It's like erasing all the pain. It's reminding me of peace, happy times and taking me somewhere better. Wonderful. And as you enjoy this beautiful feeling, you could look back at that lifetime of this man in the cave. Why did you need to experience that life? What was the purpose of it? And the test was to see if I would have the courage to save that child. Mm -hmm. I could step out of grief and fear long enough to save that child. Did you pass your test? I did. Mm -hmm. What lesson did you take from that lifetime? Don't let fear stop you. Mm -hmm. You're stronger than you know. Very good. So I'd like for you now to move to the next phase of this soul. Who do you meet with next after you leave this garden? What happened? I join other others and you join others and uh Beautiful halls, space, it's beautiful, vast space, like a, like a monument, or reminds me of a national archives, like, mm -hmm. like a Greek monument, but it's a archive. It's where we go, it's like a, like a university, like a mm -hmm. learning ground, it's so what is, it, what is it that you're learning? It's almost like when between classes students talk, mm -hmm. comparing notes, how did it go? How, did you learn anything? What was it like? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so comparing meet, notes. So you meet here between lifetimes? Yes. And you see how... Some have gone ahead, behind, and where you are, how you've come along. Mm -hmm. They help you see what things you learned and 
reflect your your gifts that you can't see they show you the they reflect it back so in this hall of learning this place what are you learning learning never stops see it's like you go from one to uh, course one level to the next mm -hmm. and we're all excited to help each other along and keep moving and not really competing it's very it's jovial it's friendly friendly competition among ourselves so let's take a look at all of those souls that you're with do you recognize any of those souls in the lifetime of Alexandra. Do any of them seem familiar? I'm joking. Oh, you again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> one of the attackers, one of the... the men in the tavern who was throwing things at me and saying I was a coward. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you to ask him that right now in this state as a soul what was his role in that life push me mm -hmm. always has this role to push me mm -hmm. he likes pushing me past my boundaries and just getting over my fears mm -hmm. all right so let's look around this hall once again and see if there are any others there that are recognized Not so far. All right, very good. So I'd like for you now to go to the place where you plan the lifetime of Alexandra. Okay. Where are you? It's like the top floor. It's where more deep study happens and uh, there's there's books and gathering spaces, and I'm. Are you by there's yourself? no. There's some guardian spirits that are. They're like uh, hall monitors, or mm -hmm. not guards really, but they just keep an eye on you to see if how you are, if you need help, if you need guidance. They're mm -hmm. there. They're they're watching from the corners, and I'm. I'm involved in a conversation, in an interaction with this, this being, this, this being, this energy, very different from mine, very, very mm -hmm. foreign, very... All right, let's find out a little bit about this being that you're speaking with. How does this being feel to you? Mechanical, it feels alien, more... Mm -hmm. Say almost like an android, almost like mm -hmm. human, but mechanical, more in the head, more. Not as emotionally based as humans, just more evolved in a different mm -hmm. place, just. Different. So, what is the purpose of you meeting with this being? Looking through life review, mm -hmm. uh, my life's very emotional, very traumatic. Mm -hmm. And this thing is almost like shaking his head, like, why? Why would you do that? Why would you go through that? Why would you need mm -hmm. to experience so much emotion? There's no logic. There's no... <laughs> So in this, no purpose. in this state that you are, in this hall, with all the books, you will understand completely why you've experienced all of these. You can see it from a much different perspective. Why have you chosen all of these lives with so much emotion? There's beauty in the human experience. When you go through all of the 
trials and emotions, you you find beauty and have compassion towards the vulnerable and can help guide them to their true nature, their true spirit, their, their resilience, their light. Sometimes you need the darkness to find the light. So what is the life purpose for the lifetime of Alexandra? What is it that you're planning for that particular life? That's where the guides, the monitor steps in and there's a disagreement mm -hmm. or like a suggestion, uh, the path I needed to take as Alexandra and the path I chose to take mm -hmm. are different. Why did you choose a different life, a different path? The being, the alien being that I was interacting with. I wanted to teach him about the emotional aspects of humanity and he wanted to teach me about the aspects he values which are different and I want to interact with this being but the monitor says this is not your original plan mm -hmm. are you sure and I I want to experience this when the monitor says you've tried, you've tried before and you always give up <laughs> mm -hmm. they're too different, they're, they won't be able to when, you, when you're human you won't be able to connect, it's very different you've tried this, you keep trying this but it's, it's not working um, so there's a meeting, there's a council meeting. I have to make my, my case like a hearing. Mm -hmm. How many are on this council? Nine. Mm -hmm. Three, 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 there's like a half moon. What do they look like, this council? The three on the right and the three on the left look like kings or judges or big human-like uh, figures mm -hmm. sitting in big chairs and with rings and, you know, power, maybe. Mm -hmm. Like teachers who you really look up to, you know, they're wise, they're... What Have about, your best interests in heart. What about the other three? The three in the middle, I, I see dark. I see they have pointy, dark hoods, like like a monk. Mm -hmm. Like a monk with a hood, like a Franciscan monk with a hood. Mm -hmm. Three of them, and I can't see their face. I They're hooded on darkness. And Why are they there? They're from the other, uh, they're from the other energy. Mm -hmm. They're the, uh, they're not the human energy. Mm -hmm. Why do they need to be in your council meeting? Because it's about combining them. It's about, my request is to combine the human energy with the alien energy. Mm -hmm. And what I could learn and what they could learn and how it could be beneficial and the monitor in the Hall of Records um, had told me I tried this before and it doesn't work. How can I make sure it works this time? So I went to the council meeting and uh, the three representatives of that other energy are there. Mm -hmm. How will you be able to do this in a lifetime as of Alexandra? How can you ensure that this is going to happen? How will you remember? <laughs> it 
it's almost uh, funny. <laughs> Say the one way to make sure you don't walk away. It's going to be very sexually arousing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, that will be the attraction. Mm -hmm. That will draw you in. It will make your energies become one. So is Alexandra, she needs to be sexually aroused in order to remember? Well, that explains, um, there's been times in her life when she feels sexually aroused, but doesn't know why, and that doesn't make sense. You know, it's not something she would choose for herself. It's not something that makes sense to her. Mm -hmm. And it's very disturbing because, uh, of who she is and how she likes to bond and this foreign energy comes in and almost feels like a betrayal, like a betrayal of herself to, to feel this. But it was required, and it was agreed upon, that's how you're going to fulfill this contract. Mm -hmm. You need this. So you don't run away. This will bring you close to this energy, so you can learn what you need to learn. Mm -hmm. So let's find out more about this lifetime that she's choosing. Let's find out who's going to be in the lifetimes. The challenges. When that happened, I uh, had to leave my body. It's too much to process. Mm -hmm. Where did the soul go when she left her body? Almost like uh, being sucked out of the reality to another place, mm -hmm. to another space and time, and did observing. This, did this part ever come back? Take a look and see. Or is this part of her still dangling out there in space? Let's see if it was fractured out. It feels like a part needed to be taken out to, um, like when you're in class and the principal comes and calls you to the office to tell you some news, mm -hmm. you get excused from class for a while to get instructed and that's mm -hmm. the purpose of leaving the body at this point. So the energy of the child was taken aboard. Mm -hmm. Who counseled her? Where did she go? It's a ship. Mm -hmm. Let's find out more about this ship and who is there. Um. feels like the... Feel the energies. Yeah, it feels like the energies of just council members, mm -hmm. like... The same three? Uh, there were more, but some of the three, yeah, mm -hmm. they were there. And, okay. and some of the humans, too, they're the human energies were there from mm -hmm. the council. Okay. Reminding me, this is part of the contract. This is why you're here. It's very good. I was given instructions. I was given information, and so is any is there any information that was given at that time that she can use now in her life as she moves forward? Perhaps something she's forgotten.
seems like the emotions experienced during trauma act as a energy mm -hmm. to feed the alien entities. Mm -hmm. And that's required. It's it sounds bad, but it's actually part of the plan. Mm -hmm. Did this soul agree to feed this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So strange. It's um. It's what I agreed to. Mm -hmm. It's for their benefit to learn about humanity and have compassion and have empathy and. Uh, blend better with us mm -hmm. and for the human side have the detached clinical maybe more what's the word like uh, me it's mechanical it seems mechanical detached um, technology or ability to overcome trauma and use it to improve and use it to surpass um, and not get stuck and not get lost. It's a mutually beneficial situation. So Alexandra has created these situations in her life in order to learn more and teach more? Yes, but not on Earth. Mm -hmm. these, these things are happening outside of this plane. These are happening in another dimensional space it's within it's not this this you know this tactile reality here it's occurring elsewhere okay well she has been experiencing things in her life blackouts of memories the first one being at nine when she was gone from the playground What happened? She was going to tell her mother about the abuse when she was nine. She planned it for a long time. She wanted to tell what happened. Mm -hmm. What happened on that playground? Oh, we stepped in. She couldn't, she wasn't, she couldn't tell. It was not agreed upon. Mm -hmm. So it was stopped. Uh, she was silenced on purpose. Mm -hmm. Just, you can't tell. You, you need to be able to withdraw within to find the inner strength you need to continue this experiment. Mm -hmm. She decided, I'll keep this to myself. I'll handle this on my own. So what did she do with her throat chakra at that time? Shut down. Mm -hmm. Is it still shut down? Shut down. <laughs> Very good. Is that what shut she feels? Down. Like she's strangled? Like something is strangling her? Choking her? Yeah. Feels foreign because it's from that contract. It's from the agreement mm -hmm. made. Um... Almost, you needed to be able to choke to develop that other side, that other strength, that resilience, that um, mm -hmm. on the other side. But uh, Alexandra took it to mean she had to take worry and take care of everyone else but herself. Mm -hmm. Is she still doing it? Always, but not supposed to. That was not part of the contract. Mm -hmm. That was the human internalizing, the silencing, and what that meant that Nobody will take care of me. I must take care of myself. I cannot speak for myself and give to myself. I must give to others. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you to go ahead and show her what that throat chakra looks like. It looks like a, like a buckle, mm -hmm. like a big belt buckle tied 
tight around the throat. Mm -hmm. Every time another notch gets tighter and tighter. Does she need to have that any longer? No, she's already gone within. She's already all right, so, developed enough strength. All right, so it's let's done. begin to, first of all, let's unloosen that buckle. Let's start slowly. And just see yourself unloosening that buckle. You see Raphael unloosening it for oh, me. Very good. Big, strong hands, just very tearing good. it out. All right. Let it go. And just allow the energy center now to begin to move naturally. Move naturally. How does that feel? Expand it out even more. Almost like there was a, a huge hurricane moving. Whirling around. Feel the energy. I feel more expanded on one side, like mm -hmm. a lopsided energy. Mm -hmm. um, and what's going on on the other side? The right side. Uh, there's something tugging at me, uh, like a mm -hmm. like a troll. Let's find out who that is. <laughs> like a little nuisance, a little pestering troll. All right, so let's find out who that troll is. I'm going to put my hand over that right side, and let's bring that energy towards you and I'd like for you now to give that energy a voice. Good morning. Her. <laughs> you there. Uh. Why are you there with her? You can speak with uh. me. Why are you holding on to her throat? I can't give her this. Why not? What would you lose if you give it to her? Control. Control. Why are you there? She takes care of me. Ah, what is your name, please? What do you call yourself? You can call me Igor. Igor? <laughs> mm, that's a nice name. Yeah. Igor, how did you find Alexandra? How old was she when you found her? I found her before she was Alexandra. Ah, as a soul? Yes. Mm -hmm. Was she living a different lifetime? Yes. Where was she? She was a slave. She was a slave. And who were you? I was a feeling. I was, uh... Not a human. Mm -hmm. Were you an energy or were you... An, an energy feeding okay. off the pain. Okay. So as you were feeding off of the pain of the slave, how did that make you feel? Someone's paying attention to me. Ah. Uh, so, Igor, you, you followed this soul in order for her to keep giving you attention, to feel important? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you know... That you can do that on your own. That you can get even more energy. Did you know that? Will it be like hers? It could be even more powerful. Do you want to try it? I don't want to let go. Well, let's find out how it feels. Would you like to do that? Just to play with me. You can take my other hand. Okay. So I'd like for you now to look inside of you and find that spark. Find that spark. This is the God spark. This is what created you, Igor. Tell me when you find that spark. It's like my little blanket I hold. It's mm -hmm. like a little light I hold in mm -hmm. my chest. A little, yeah. So I'd like for you, little Igor, toy. let's make it bigger. Use your mind to expand that light and make it bigger and bigger. And tell me how that light feels. It's warm. Mm. Now make it even bigger. Make that light bigger.
in Alexandra's light. This is your light. You can make it as big as you want. What does that warm, loving light feel like to you? Like a big balloon. Mm. Can you feel safe in this balloon? Yes, I can leave finally. All right, so I'd like for you now to say something to Alexandra because you've been tugging at her for a long time. What would you like to say to her? Help yourself. Mm -hmm. Love yourself. Very good. So, Igor, I'd like for you to go ahead and release all of your energy from her body. And let's begin to drift away in that beautiful balloon of white light. And allow your own guides to lead you back home. And tell me when you get there. Okay. Very good. How does it feel to be home? <sighs> I'm much bigger now. Very good. Igor, may the light of the universe always accompany you and keep that light shining. Thank you. And now let's disconnect from Igor. And I'd like Raphael to begin working on that chakra once again and tell me, how does that look now? That energy was paralyzing down to the right hand, the mm -hmm. ability to manifest and move and create and act on her behalf. Mm -hmm. the, the tugging caused us a rip of energy from the the heart to the throat to the arm to the ability to create and manifest and move forward and help herself and love herself like a handicapped that arm was mm -hmm. twisted and bound and she needs to learn how to use it again mm -hmm. and give it love and help herself so I'd like for you to take her now to a time when her soul was using that hand to manifest take her now to that lifetime and tell me when you're there Where are you? The life of an actress and a dancer. Mm -hmm. 1920s and America. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that life. Shining, very happy and confident. Mm -hmm. Bright. So I'd like for you to just step into that life and begin to absorb that confidence, that knowing, that feeling of success and love, knowing that whatever it is that you do will be successful just because you do. Things with passion, things with joy. 
your authenticity flows through your work and your manifestations. How does that feel? Mm, wonderful, like the before the, the trolls. <laughs> The thinking was I need to lose part of myself to to be, to justify being. I must give and lose, but instead the right hand, like fairy dust, can open doors and create opportunities and create an opening and not losing anything. Mm -hmm. Create okay. magic. Create, mm -hmm. manifest light. Beautiful. So I'd like for you to take that feeling and just bring it with you into this life of Alexandra. Knowing that this is a connection that you already have with yourself. It looks like a magician mm -hmm. throwing throwing a hand up in the air and there's flowers and light and glitter and taking mm -hmm. a bow. Mm -hmm. That's what it was meant for. Mm -hmm. So now that we understand that, let's take a look at some of the contracts that she made again in this lifetime and how can she use that manifestation now to fulfill her purpose here? Now that she's not being stopped. Write again. Mm -hmm. She's a very talented writer, but she doesn't write anymore. Mm -hmm. Who can help her with this writing? Is there a guide that can assist her? Can coax her? Can remind her? She already is this. It mm -hmm. doesn't need any help. She just needs to do it. Well, it has to be with the right hand that was mm -hmm. <laughs> held back by pain. Wonderful. No right hand needs to write again. It just Good. needs to create from the heart and let it flow. Mm -hmm. All that pain, all that sadness, don't lock it up inside. Let it flow. So Give she it a needs voice. to write about it. She write about it. Good. Why is it that she has, that she has been awakened and fell back to sleep so many times? Persecution. Mm -hmm. Persecution. Other times, other lives, persecution, uh, light cannot shine that bright or you will be killed. Mm -hmm. They will think of you as the enemy and they will persecute you and you will die. What lifetime is she connected to that is affecting her so much? Oh. Several. There's, there's several. There's, there's one of a woman who created rituals in the forest and mm -hmm. ceremonies with the earth and the rulers of the time thought it was witchcraft and would harm the the rulers of that area and blamed her for any any lack of success that they saw because she wanted to be alone again in nature. Mm -hmm. Isolate herself. That's all she does. She does a lot. Easy target. Blame the witch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how, how was she persecuted in that life? How was she killed? Of 
forced to confess, forced to confess the truth that I wasn't true, just forced to lie and confess. Mm -hmm. More closing of her throat. That's it. Does she need that any longer? Don't deny yourself anymore. Don't deny yourself anymore, but so many times had to deny yourself that. Mm -hmm. So let's disconnect from that life completely, now knowing that she's living in different times. She's chosen a time in which she can speak her truth without being persecuted. So I'd like for you to just see that lifetime as if it was a boat tied up to a pier. And I'd like for you to just unravel that rope, toss it into the water, and allow that lifetime to just float away. No longer tied to this one. And as that lifetime drifts away, feel how that affects this life. She won't feel so brittle anymore. Mm -hmm. She always feels brittle, like she's going to break. Like right. if she tries to create, she tries to get ahead. So let's find like out break. what that brittle life is. I'd like for you to take her to that brittle life. What lifetime is affecting her that makes her feel so fragile? There are many. Mm -hmm. There are many lives. There's different different weaknesses perceived. Okay. There's a problem with her sexuality that made her feel she had to hide that. Mm -hmm. Always used to betray her then she agreed to it, so... Mm -hmm. mm. So what I would like for you to do is I would like to, you to comfort these lifetimes, these personalities, and I'd like for you to send them love. all of these lifetimes that you've lived. Open your heart and send them your love that they need to become stronger and more courageous. They need someone to believe in them. Be that courageous one. And tell me what happens to each and every one of these as you send them this strength, this courage, this love. I'm free. Mm -hmm. Release them. Release them with love. They feel stunted, as if they were wanted to do more, but were stopped. And mm -hmm. the car, the gold contract, the duty that was never fulfilled, they were stopped. Mm -hmm. they, their weakness, they were silenced. They were stopped. They were killed. Mm -hmm. and, and now. Do we need to connect to those lifetimes any longer? Can we just take the experience? I think it's the memory of the lives that make you go back to sleep. The mm -hmm. Feeling stunted, you can't fulfill this, you need to forget, you have to go back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does she need this any longer? Can we set these memories free? 
They need to be set free. All right, so go ahead. And I'd like for you to come up with your own ritual this time. How would you like to set these lifetimes free so that they are no longer connected to this one? Write a story, burn the story, sing a song. Mm -hmm. She can sing sometimes in noises that don't make sense. Mm -hmm. But they do make sense. They, the vibrations have, they have a purpose, they have an energy, they, All right. they heal. So let's sing a song right now that she can create to release these lives. It doesn't have to make sense. They could just be noises. Let's use these vibrations to set them free. Hiya. song to Gina as she was dying mm -hmm. to set her soul free. Her soul traveled with this sound. How is Gina now? Does she have a She's message? light. <laughs> mm -hmm. Does she have a message for her? Love yourself the way you loved me. care of yourself the way you took care of me. Was Gina the same as the Lion Man Spirit Guide? Gina was a conduit, a little, little voice little portal of energy for not just the guide but other aspects to communicate and connect and remind and heal mm -hmm. yeah the lion man was part of it but there were others too just whatever whatever was needed to to heal to love to remember that light mm -hmm. Gina brought it forth and she was that light. Wonderful. Now, there are other relationships in her life that have set her back. Why is it that she keeps attracting these relationships that make her go back to sleep? The troll. Mm. Yeah, it was that troll that would not let go of her left, uh, no, mm -hmm. the right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Would not let go of of her that needed to feed on that that dark misery that mm -hmm. kept her asleep was an anchor mm -hmm. just so what do you recommend now as far as relationships go create something beautiful mm -hmm. But she's afraid of having her heart broken once again. Be the star in your life for once. Mm -hmm. Just like that lifetime? Yes. Good. 
Don't be afraid to be the star in your life and receive the receive the accolades, receive the bouquets, the flowers, receive the applause, the admiration, you deserve it. You are free to create and open the doors for yourself. Beautiful. Don't be afraid. Now she also says that she's had some some dreams that are very real. That she raised a child for so many years. What was that? Who was this child? That kept coming up in her dreams. I was a child created by the mingling of energies. Mm-hmm. Hermione named the child Sophia for knowledge um, because because her soul considered the alien energies to work with knowledge more than emotion. Mm-hmm. And so the child was created as a joining of the heart and the mind. But she felt that something died. Well, there were miscarriages. Mm-hmm. But they didn't die. What happened? Why the, why the miscarriages? She had to forget to... Not, I mean, the forgetting was... She wasn't ready to know what was happening. Mm-hmm. Just left with the feeling of loss, of having life and having love and loss. But her mind didn't know there were miscarriages. They were just feelings of loss and death. Mm-hmm. But they were creations. They were. Who created these? She created this. She, she created this with the other energies. Mm-hmm. It was an agreement. She agreed to do this. She wanted to participate. She requested this, she petitioned for this. Mm-hmm. Were these other energies that you speak of human? Or partially human from her, mm-hmm. partially from others, but not completely human. Okay. Is she ready to understand what has been happening to her? She's getting ready. She's beginning to accept that this is not so crazy. Mm-hmm. So what has happened to her? <laughs> um, has she been taken by other energies? Many times. Many times. When did it all begin? She was a child. Mm-hmm. Can you tell me about that? Is she ready to hear this? Raphael will be there for her. All right. So let's call Raphael, please. She's detaching from herself to be able to observe and not be affected. Wonderful. I am here. We are looking down as these lives and these experiences from from the safety of a distance. All right. So let's look at it without any judgment as observers, just to understand this lifetime of Alexandra and what she has experienced. When did this begin? She was prepped. She was getting prepped when she was a child, when she was five and seven and nine. She was getting prepped. Mm -hmm. How did they prep her? Removing her from her body during times of trauma. Mm -hmm. And taking her aboard and debriefing, reminding, prepping, giving her tools on how to cope. Mm Did she agree to this? Yes. Mm -hmm. Before this life, she agreed to it. Of course, the child was a child. Mm -hmm. So when did it begin? When did what begin? The separation or the creation? The creation. 
The creation began when she was 15. Mm -hmm. Did she have any lost time at that time? She does. She has lost time. She has episodes where she does not remember what really happened. Mm -hmm. So without using any emotions or any judgment, I'd like for you to show her the first time that she had that missing time and was taken away for a creation. No, actually it was 12. Mm -hmm. It was before that. If she was 12, she was, um, she had a neighbor. Mm -hmm. And he was older. He, he was part of the plan. Mm -hmm. He, not completely human. But she was very attracted and confused by her feelings for this older man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they all had this common theme, and, and this was agreed upon, too, in mm -hmm. between lives. They all have light eyes. They all have green or blue or hazel eyes. Mm -hmm. That's how she would recognize him, and the neighbor did. He had the green eyes, and he looked at her, and in that moment was able to tell her what was about to happen, remind her of the agreement, and... Just as it was agreed upon, it was the sexual feelings that drew her in. In the first episode of Forgetting. What happened during that episode? Was she taken? Some episodes happened on Earth and others did not. Mm -hmm. So sometimes she was taken and sometimes she wasn't. Mm -hmm. But... Her energy, her, her, her essence was taken, but mm -hmm. the body wasn't always taken, mm -hmm. sometimes, but not always. Yeah, there was another one, there were several, there were many, but that was the first. So what happened during these times? What would happen? Her only memory was of having been aroused mm -hmm. and a foreign feeling in her body of just having her body betray her. Mm -hmm. Almost like not wanting to be aroused, but being aroused mm -hmm. and feeling weird about it, like foreign. But the reason she felt that is to help her forget of any pain she may have experienced Arousal is better than pain, mm -hmm. but sometimes there were there were more parts of her that needed to be taken or needed to be combined and. Mm -hmm. Are we talking about and reapplied and her eggs? You know, yes, there were there were there were commingling of of parts of energies of. DNAs mm -hmm. that needed to be sometimes physically taken and put back in and monitored and removed and mm -hmm. and it started when she was 12. She had experiences of bleeding and not knowing why, we, why uh, a lot of physical pain in the abdomen, a lot of unexplainable symptoms. Doctors didn't know what was going on. They they said she imagined it. It was in her head. She mm -hmm. was wanting attention. So she was silencing it. Have any of these encounters with these energies created life, created her own children? A lot of them didn't thrive. Mm -hmm. Sophia just thrived. She, she was the best. Mm -hmm. There are two more. Is she visiting them? Sometimes when she allows herself to, to drift and maybe hypnotizes herself to remember. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in dreams, sometimes when working with 
women who are pregnant in her work, it brings these memories back. It, mm -hmm. That's why she didn't like children for so long and didn't want to be near pregnant people for so long. Mm -hmm. She wasn't ready to remember. She didn't want to. She wasn't ready. But she's ready. She's getting ready now. And the memories are trickling in. There's, there's two more that have grown. But they're not as human. Mm -hmm. they're, Has she ever seen them? She saw them once or twice. She saw them... Well, she remembers that she saw them. She saw them more than that, but, but she remembers she saw them once or twice. Can you show her a picture of what they look like now? Yeah. Yeah, they... Um, mm. They look like, um, they're beautiful in their own way. They look like a combination of a bird and a reptile and a human. Mm -hmm. They have features of all three. They have the big eyes, but the big eyes are one color. They're pretty and green mm -hmm. or yellow like a, like a reptile. Mm -hmm. And instead of a mouth, it's more of a, almost a beak, but the beak has skin, like a human. Mm -hmm. And instead of hair, it's almost feathers mm -hmm. that cover the body, but are more on the head. And they're brilliant light. They're joyous light. They're humanoid, but they're not really human there. Where are they? They're being held somewhere safe. Mm -hmm. What does she need to know about these two? Just that they're love. Mm -hmm. There's love, there's light, there's... There's a relationship, there's, um... The circle of love and light continues, even if she can't remember all of it, there's, they're there. Mm -hmm. And they're helping her, they're... They have their own work to do, they, they are helping. Mm -hmm. They're very busy. Wonderful. And what happened with Sophia? Sophia matured. Sophia now takes care of the others that like her. Mm -hmm. She's like the bridge between the children and the surrogates. Mm -hmm. Did Alexandra agree to be a surrogate? She petitioned for it. Now, she's also seen blue orbs. Yes. And golden and purple orbs. Yes. What are those orbs? Yes, those are the energies. Those are the energies. Those are the souls when they're visiting here. Mm -hmm. That's how they can be seen because the vibrations are so different. Mm -hmm. They can't materialize the way they really are. They, they couldn't. They're just... Their energies, their vibrations are not able to do that. Mm -hmm. So they materialize as orbs and they assist. So these orbs, could they be guides? Or are they aliens? What are they? Or they're both. They're both. Some of them are more human than others. The golden ones are more human than not. The, mm -hmm. the blue ones are more advanced. They are, they are the guiding, healing energies that come with some energy work. And they show up like guides to help transform and heal and connect. Mm -hmm. So when she sees an orb in the future, what should she do? Welcome it. Okay, good. They're there to help. They're there to help. There's, mm -hmm. there's three more coming. She saw them mm -hmm. a few times, but has since shut off her connection with them. But there's three more. There's, they're purple. Good. So what recommendation do you have to give her about this shutting off? Remember the light. Remember remember the love of that child that Maruk saved. Remember the love and light that Gina brought into her life. Mm -hmm. Oh, she needs to get over the grief. 
what is Just keep, focus on life. What is keeping her in grief? She's been losing people. People have been dying in her life. How can she get over this grief? What's causing it? In a way, it was the troll. It was the... It was a troll. <laughs> in a way, it was the troll. The troll attracted relationships that would put her to sleep, relationships with lower vibrations that, mm. in a way, she needed to help raise her vibration, and some weren't ready, you know? Mm -hmm. She lowered her vibration to be with him. Mm -hmm. And in lowering the vibration, you see more fear. You see more loss. You see death. You think it's final, you think it's a punishment, you think it's painful. If her vibration were free to see what it really is, there would be no grief. There would be there would be a continua continuation of love and light and joy and see beyond the veil and no grief. But Alexandra has had quite a few illnesses herself. And she wonders how she was even able to heal herself from multiple sclerosis, from those TIAs with the hole in her heart. What was that all about? She didn't do that alone. Mm. Who helped her? Well, we all helped her a little bit. There was a, She has a lineage of healers. Mm -hmm. She has her grandmother. Mm -hmm. Her grandmother's always watching and helping and guiding and... Even in her dreams, the grandmother shows up as a grandmother, which is funny. Uh -huh. <laughs> a Native American grandmother. Her gra grandmother did look like a mm -hmm. indigenous woman. She was. She had braids. And so the grandmother figure of her dreams is her father's mother coming through as a healer. Mm -hmm. And now uh, the, the contract she had to do this to... Mm -hmm. To be this surrogate, this conduit, this mm -hmm. bridge, uh, and required her to be healthy and to live long enough to do everything. So the illnesses were part of the the human experience to help her connect with the other realms and the other guides and the other healers, so that. She would be around long enough to fulfill these contracts. And remember, she's more than her body. Mm -hmm. She's much more powerful than she thinks. This little body is just... It's funny. <laughs> she's so much bigger than this. Mm -hmm. She sees Raphael as a big lion, but she's a big lion. Mm -hmm. Her energy is big and bright and proud and strong and resilient and it's funny that she thinks she's weak it's funny that mm -hmm. the lion thinks it's so small so let's shine some of that light into her body she says she has some mysterious breathing problems was that the troll <laughs> yeah a <The> troll <laughs> so that troll was that wheezing troll. and choking her and giving her phlegm that was pulling on her energy from her right hand, constricting mm -hmm. the lung on the right side, causing her throat to feel locked. Mm -hmm. And the phlegm was just the inflammation from all of that energy blocking and pulling and keeping her tied down to the misery of mm -hmm. past. So how's her chest look now? She's starting to rebuild it. Yeah, she's starting to heal herself and... Even before coming here, she's the skill she uses to heal others. For some reason, she doesn't use on herself, but <laughs> she she's beginning to use them on herself, and she's already started the process of healing. Good of returning the energy and the fluids and the balance back to give her lungs and her throat and her arm and her face a chance to balance. Good. She needs to capture the light and she needs to spread her human vessel to All right, so what carry light, the light. What light can we be using today in order to 
begin that healing? Is there a certain frequency or color that you can use today? The three purple orbs need to step in. They All need right. to go to the crown and the right arm and the left arm and geometrically send patterns of that purple light, that sacred geometry of light to reconnect the energy body to all of its potential of everything it could be, to clear away all the memories and all the pain and remind you of who you are and why you're here. Let those lights connect you. Can we request those lights now? Yes. Thank you. Let's invite those lights now to begin using their power to transform this body. And just report back to me and tell me what's happening. And they call themselves faith, hope, and love. Mm, beautiful. Faith is at the crown. Hope is on the left and the right is love. But it doesn't matter where they are. Mm -hmm. It just connects the intuition with the ability to manifest and remembering the light within. Ties all the chakras together. There seems to be a missing part. There's a. Mm -hmm. There's a. She's never been very grounded. All right. Tell me where that missing part is, so we can retrieve it. Where, where was? Is it supposed to be? Well, it's the root chakra. It's mm -hmm. the womb. It's the missing. Mm -hmm. It's that feeling of loss. It's, gaining control again of her entire being without the gaps of time, without mm -hmm. the guilt of sexuality, without the feeling of loss. All right, so let's follow where it is that that piece is missing. Where is it? It's at the base of both feet as well as at the Kind of between the tailbone and mm -hmm. the base of the pelvis, that area, the root, you know, so the what feet. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shake those feet and loosen it and bring it back up. Ooh. <laughs> wow, they're alive. <laughs> wow, they get so numb sometimes. Bring it up. Okay. I felt good. Go ahead and find wow. the piece and begin using your all of your power to begin circulating that energy back where it belongs. <sighs> Breathe life into it. Welcome it back. And send your love. Send your love into the future. Mm -hmm. There's a sting song, you know, send your love mm -hmm. into the future, into the past. So let's do Send that. your love. So let me know how this body is reacting now. Like a starfish. Wonderful. Like a starfish. <laughs> we know that when you take a piece off a starfish, it regenerates. it regenerates. That's right. Yeah, and a starfish because she needs to be the star again. Beautiful. She needs that light and to be to let herself shine like a star that she is. You Wonderful. need to regenerate. Wonderful. Connect. So as the lights continue working on her body, I have a question about two different 
things that have happened to her. The man who looks like Jesus, who is he? He is one of her advisors, one of her counselors in the other uh, between lives. Mm -hmm. Why has he shown up in her life? He picks different bodies to show up in, just mm -hmm. kind of takes over in momentarily while that body is checked out and just walks in. Mm -hmm. Always picks the body that she will recognize, so that the eyes again, the green eyes, the, mm -hmm. that look that she ingrained in her memory and shows up physically to give her the strength that she needs at that time and the gifts and the light and sometimes the forgetting that she needs to move on and mm -hmm. it's a step in guide soul that wants to connect with her physically to assist her in this lifetime. Good. And what about the men who are dressed in suits? The black suits. Who are those men? Yeah, they aren't good. They have a, another interest. They have a vested interest in the womb. They have another agenda for the creations. Mm-hmm of her womb. They're almost like they want to sabotage and take that for themselves. They don't want... They want to steal that life. They mm -hmm. want to interfere. Yeah, they're not good. They're not part of the contract. Mm -hmm. How can we sever that? Keep her protected from those men? She has to fully embody herself mm -hmm. and let go of those fears and the memories of being silenced because when they see that she knows who she is and sees, when they see her full light and potential, it can't affect her, but mm -hmm. it's the weakness and the fear and the, the forgetting and the causes a void and this void creates an opening for, for them to step in. Mm -hmm. But if that void is filled, filled with light and power, they cannot affect her. All right. So let's begin to, by today by creating a trigger for her to remember this light, this power that she truly has. I'd like for you to go ahead and see yourself in the fullest potential, the happiest, strongest vibration the most powerful light, expand the soul as big as it truly is, and see the enormous potential that this soul has brought. And tell me when you are at that full potential. Feel the joy, feel the love. I see. Mm -hmm. I see the energy is so big. Mm -hmm. and now that we understand that, what message would you like to give Alexandra before we're done? The vision she had a long time ago of, of the lion man standing on the water mm -hmm. and reaching out both hands to invite her in. This is the time when you become one. Wonderful. And what is the reason you brought her here today at this time with such changes and plans and schedules? Why at this time today on this full moon? She needs to get ready for what's coming. There's a lot of things that she needs to do and she needs to be empowered to do them. Mm -hmm. There are great changes coming where she needs to be her full potential of light to join the others and be who she came here to be and do what she needs to do in this life. And it's time. Wonderful. Is there anything else you would like to tell Alexandra or are we complete for today?
she's still opening up and she still has more to learn she still has more to reveal to herself but it's not quite ready yet it's getting there it's She's unfolding. There's mm-hmm. more unfolding to be done. And more connections to be made to the others. Both here and there, mm-hmm. there needs to be a reconnection. Wonderful. Is there anything else? Are we complete? They will reveal themselves when it's time. All right. Very good. Wonderful all over. Look at that. I feel like my eyelids are stuck together. <laughs> <laughs> you did great. Let's switch if things I, like, up. I cried them into sticking together. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, How do you feel? Oh, my gosh. I feel... I feel warm and full of just potential and light. And <laughs> as I was waking up, um, I heard Raphael look at me and say, see yourself reflected in my eyes. Mm, nice. Yeah, see, it's almost like he's a reflection of me and I'm a reflection mm-hmm. of him and we are one. And you know, don't feel small compared to me. We are. We are one. Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Wow. How does your body feel? Happy. <laughs> My legs feel awake. They're like, awake. They I normally don't feel awake down there. Isn't that something? Well, guess what was like down life. there? You were... That was hollow down there. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? It feels good. Wow. What an experience. Yeah, it's, it's an experience of um, validation. Mm-hmm. I mean, some things that I remember... Uh, I suspected, but there were some things that I remember that I did not suspect mm-hmm. that were a surprise to learn. Wow. You want to share mm-hmm. some of this with others? Well, the man in black, yeah. I had no idea that that's what that meant. I we couldn't take out any know. personal stuff. What about the other stuff? Yeah. Yeah, if, if anyone finds it useful. Well, that's very interesting. You went to the hall of... Uh... In between lives. I like that place. Mm-hmm. It feels strange to think that, uh, yeah, I created all of this. Yeah. But it's empowering to think you're not a victim of no circumstance or any negativity. Or you created your lesson plan pretty created pretty, my. Uh, I advocated my lesson plan. Yeah. I wanted to jump ahead, I guess. So. It's like going to college and... Taking a lot of courses. (laughs) I guess I was so. I needed that push and I needed the experiences that I perceived to be painful to Mm -hmm. push me forward. Because otherwise I wouldn't have sought guidance or Mm -hmm. my inner landscape would not look as rich as it is without those experiences. Mm -hmm. I needed that. There's so much love. Mm -hmm. And you get to connect with Gina. Your cat? My baby. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful light. little light. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's wonderful, too, how different uh, energies and beings can go from body to body and experience to experience. They're not mm-hmm. confined to one vessel. And nope. how your guides can come through others at moments of need, mm-hmm. like the... The guy who looks like Jesus keeps appearing. Because <laughs> yeah. so, that's one of your council members who just jumps in and says... Well, almost you. like a, when there's a boxing match and you go to your corner and the guy gives you water and pats you, you know, <laughs> says, you can do it, go back. <laughs> it's like that. You just yeah. show up and telepathically give you that strength and that support and yeah. that wisdom and send you back out there. And keep going, keep going. And I'm going. sure there's been other instances where... You haven't seen him, but have had someone pop up in your life just when you needed it. Yeah, there have been people that have popped up that mm-hmm. they weren't really people. Um, yeah, I, like, once Random. I was, 
Maybe they were like energies that visited me and I saw as people, but they weren't really people. And they were just the healing energies that came at that time for that purpose. That's great. Wow. To guide me. Wow. Alexander, we did an amazing job today here. That was wonderful. Wow. That was really amazing. So tell everybody why you came here. Well, when I made the appointment, I thought I was coming for one reason. And yeah. by the time the appointment came, it turned out to be other reasons. But it was divine timing, I think. Yeah, yeah. And mainly, I just wanted to get clarity on certain mysteries in my life that felt mm -hmm. disjointed, like puzzle pieces I didn't know what to do with. And, mm -hmm. and now the big picture makes sense. So do you think that you got all the puzzle pieces put together? Yes, for the most part. I think all the puzzle pieces are together now. and The missing time? I suspected but was afraid to understand mm -hmm. what it all meant yeah. because of judgment, you know, guilt. and Yeah. And you were able to see these things from like a non-judgmental observer. How did that help you? Did that you was key. Yeah. That was key. And I, I think it was a wonderful feeling to have to have Raphael there. Mm -hmm. Raphael is her guide. My guide, my, my lion man friend. Tell him, tell him what it looks, what your guide looks like. Like an eight foot tall Beauty and the Beast lion um, mm. <laughs> with really broad shoulders and a lot of love and light and mm -hmm. was there to sever cords and um, yeah. remove obstacles, but yeah. also to keep me safe. And uh, I felt this energy surround me and cocoon me to allow me to view these things so that mm -hmm. I wouldn't be afraid. Yeah. Because before, normally I'm just afraid and I shut down. Mm -hmm. But being removed and held safely in that light yeah. allowed me to yeah. see this. And uh, you've had other hypnosis sessions done before. Yeah. How did uh, this one differ? Because they're all different. Very different. Well, my first few were like pulling teeth. They're <laughs> awful. <laughs> I felt bad for the people hypnotizing me. It, it felt stunted it felt um like grading something hard but mm -hmm. this one flowed and it was different because i felt that safety and i felt mm -hmm. protected and it allowed me to have a more rich mm -hmm. fluid experience so how would you recommend someone maybe prepare or find a hypnotist that would make them feel comfortable like you felt here <laughs> What would you recommend for someone? Well, for me, when I first found you on YouTube, I was just very fascinated by all the experiences I was witnessing, and I mm -hmm. never thought I, I would want or would need a session. Yeah. But then when the time came that I felt um, I could benefit from one, I couldn't think of anybody else I wanted to see. Mm -hmm. Because I, I saw how you helped all those people, and I saw how they benefited from your, mm -hmm. your loving guidance. and. Mm -hmm. The safety, even yeah. when they went through a lot of, mm -hmm. you know, reliving of trauma, yeah, it was safe, and that attracted me. And I don't think I had that with others mm -hmm. for some reason. Yeah, and we did some exercises beforehand mm -hmm. to help prep you. How did they help you? I think they helped me let go, and they helped me mm -hmm. dance, like you say, mm -hmm. you know, and, and participate more fully. Good. And trust. So... Um, we did switch you around a lot. We we changed the schedule a few times. Oh, yeah. And sometimes, like she said, it was divine timing. Oh, yeah. So if you want a session with me, it's divine timing. Just okay. go to my website, follow my newsletter. It comes out approximately once a month, depending on where you are. And um, you got to click on those links quickly to get to my calendar. And uh, there are very limited sessions for a month. And uh, so you have to be fast. Now, I also am doing gatherings, events all over the world. And we met in Tampa, in Tampa, in Tampa. at one of those events. So as soon as she came, yeah. I said, I've seen you before. And she was yeah. she was in the Tampa event. So try to make it to one of those. What, what did you get from that event? Did you feel? You know, it prepared me for a lot of events that happened afterwards that transformed me. So again, oh. it was like divine timing. It was meeting the right people who yeah. would support me and help me through the next month. And had my session not been rescheduled, I think I would be deficient in a way. Mm. It was like a, 
the fact that it was rescheduled was divine timing. Wow. Amazing. I don't know how else to say it. It just all worked out the way it should have, and the right people were brought together to Great. help. So just visit my website to the events page, and hopefully I'll see you at one of these gatherings. Each one is totally unique and different. You get to meet a lot of people just like you who are watching these videos, and you can't talk to them, to anybody about it. So this is a great opportunity for meeting those people. So I hope you enjoyed this session. I certainly did. It was wow. I didn't have to say much. <laughs> you just did a Usually lot of talking. Not chatty, yes. <laughs> so thanks for watching. Until the next video. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Okay. That was wonderful. Take my break. I don't know. Thank you.